right, pre-algebra, chapter one, section five, where we're gonna be working a little bit farther with our words and equations, making tables and graphs. And first I wanna talk about functions. What is a function? Functions are relations in which each member of the domain, remember the domain are your X values, each member of the domain is paired with exactly one member of the range. So every X has exactly one Y value. All right, the function rule describes the operation which must be performed on the domain to get the corresponding range value. We will use function tables to organize and display the inv input values. Let me show you what this all looks like. Here is a chart. Here you can't see very well, but this is the domain or the X values. This is the function rule, in case your paper looks really dark too. That's what operation has taken place to the X to put out your Y value, also known as your range. All your Y values are your range. All right, so our instructions here, let's read our problem. June is ordering tickets for a show. The tickets are $22 each, and there is a $6 surcharge per order. Not per ticket, but per order. Make a function table for four different input values. Now, I've underlined four different um, any four will do if it just says four different, but they've chosen to do one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to ask that for your homework, let's all do the same input so we can check our answers. So let's just use one, two, three, and four um, for these notes. All right, then state the domain and the range of the function. All right, so $22 per ticket plus a $6 surcharge. So one ticket is $22 plus six makes 28 um, two tickets, you'd have $44 plus six is 50. Three tickets would be 66 plus six, 72, and so on and so forth. And then you'll notice here, whoops, I scrolled too far too fast. You'll notice here they stated their domain and their range, and they're in consecutive order, but it worked out that they were in consecutive order anyway. But let's get in the habit of looking and making sure our domain and range are always from least to greatest. And all of the domain values, these are your X and these are your Y. Okay, now let's see if we can do one on our own. For each ticket cost and surcharge given below, make a function table for four different input. Four different input. I said let's all do one, two, three, and four. So these are our X values or our range. And for this problem, they're wanting us to use $8 per ticket. I'm going to put X for per ticket plus $1.50 surcharge. And then our Y value is going to be our total cost. So maybe we should define our variable. X stands for um, number of tickets purchased. And Y is going to be total cost love to define my variable so everybody knows what we're talking about. So I'm going to have 8 times for one ticket. So it'll be 950. 8 times two tickets, 16 plus $1.50 will make 1750. 8 times three tickets plus $1.50. That'll be 2550. 8 times four plus $1.50 makes 33.50. State my domain, work on those brackets, one, two, three, and four, and my range, nine, we could say 0.5, because that zero isn't doing anything for us, 17.5, 25.5, and 33.5. That's my range. All right, I'm gonna leave uh, example two for you to do. So when I check your notes tomorrow, 
pretty sure you have attempted to fill in the chart for example two but I do want you to use one two three and four for your input values all right so as you finish up and turn over to the back let's review a function what makes a relation a function let's make sure you know this this is very important every X has exactly one Y that is what makes a relation a function so I might ask if I give you some um, let's give you a set let me give you a relation one two three four uh, one five and two four is that relation a function think about that is this relation a function yes or no and I want to see which answer you circled tomorrow think about is this relation a function and we'll do that together tomorrow okay um, on the back we can describe functions <clears throat> with words equations tables and graphs so here is an example in words the distance biked is equal to 12 miles per hour times the number of hours so there it is in words those words can be translated into an equation distance equals the distance we've traveled or excuse me the distance is um, our rate 12 miles per hour times time our input would be here this is our time and our output would be our distance and here it is in a graph so all of these represent a function every X has one Y for each X there was a Y only one Y so let's see um, about e this example here Tori's computer backs up the file she's working on every five minutes. So that means when, when there's been a backup, five minutes has taken place. So every five minutes, she's going to back up her file. Make a function table to find the time after three, six, nine, and 12 backups. So every time there's been a backup, five minutes has passed. So if she's had three backups, 15 minutes have passed, 6, 30, 9, 45, and so on and so forth. So that's our problem in words. The first thing we have to do is define our variables. And that's what they're going to do here. M is going to represent minutes. And B is going to represent backups. So the function rule is M equals, well, M equals 5B. So for every backup, you're multiplying times 5 minutes. So um, 3, 6, 9, and 12, those were given to me here. This is my X value or my domain, my input. Maybe I should call that input rather than X. And then, uh, so this is how many minutes have passed, and this is how many backups. And then they've plotted it on a graph so that you can see uh, the progression all right so here's a problem for us to work Victor's heart beats 72 minutes I mean excuse me 72 times a minute all right so write an equation to find the number of times Victor's heart beats any number of minutes so I'm gonna need to define my variables I'm going to let M stand for minutes. And I'm going to let H equal his heartbeats. That's my de uh, those are my variables. So for question A, make a, an algebraic equation. Uh, 72 times for every minute, that's how many heartbeats. Victor's heart beats 72 times a minute. So in two minutes, his heart will have, be have beaten 144 times. So uh, there's my equation. All right. 
B says to make a function table. Oh, oh, we'll put B over here then. Here's my function table. So um, 72M is going to spit out heartbeats. So I need to put in minutes. And uh, it says here to try it for 5, 10, 15, and 20 minutes. So when I plug in 72 times 5, I get 360. 72 times 10, 720. 72 times 15, 1080. 72 times 20, 14, 40. All right, and then C says let's make a graph. So notice how they've done this in increments of 5 here but in increments of 100 there. So I'm going to have to estimate some of my points. So if I go 5 minutes, 360, well somewhere between uh, 200 and 400 is 300. 360 is going to be closer to 400. So there's my first point. Then 10 minutes was 720. So between 6 and 600 and 800 is 700. 720 be a little closer to 700 than to 800. 15 is 1080, so um, not quite um, 1100. So I'm going to go here, a little bit lower maybe. And then 20 at 1440. Here's 20, here's 14, that'd be 15. So 1440 should be closer to 1400 than to 1500. It should make a straight line. It looks like it does because it's uh, going up in even increments. All right, that's the lesson for today. Come to class prepared to make some function tables. And have a great rest of your day.